Monday, end of August here, August 30th. So hope you are having um, a good day. And uh, we are looking ahead to this coming Sunday, September 5th. That will be Labor Day weekend, the first Sunday of the month, of a, a new month as we turn the calendar as well from summer and begin to welcome fall. We will still be outside on Sunday and we will have just one worship service just a reminder for you it will be a messiah worships united service at 10 a.m and it's a service um, i'm calling it a service of healing and blessing one of the things that we'll be doing during that worship service is um, blessing our students and teachers as they'll be going off to school and um, praying for them in the new year that things go well but uh l more than that a larger service of blessing as well so opportunities for all of us to um, receive prayers of healing and uh, to just spend some time in healing prayers litanies and those kinds of things so uh, a service of healing and blessing and uh, one of the reasons that we are doing that is because of the gospel reading that we will be hearing on sunday this gospel reading from the seventh chapter of Mark has two different healing stories with Jesus in them. And so I'm going to read the our scripture reading for Sunday, read you both of these stories about Jesus, and then we'll just spend a couple of minutes talking about them. My guess is that they are familiar stories to you. And so I invite you to Actually, I even invite you to close your eyes if you'd like and listen and uh, listen for what catches your ear, what captures your attention as you hear this particular scripture. Mark chapter 7, verses 24 to 37. Jesus set out and went away to the region of Tyre. He entered a house and did not want anyone to know he was there. Yet he could not escape notice, but a woman whose little daughter had an unclean spirit, immediately heard about him, and she came and bowed down at his feet. Now the woman was a Gentile of Syrophoenician origin. She begged him to cast the demon out of her daughter. Jesus said to her, Let the children be fed first, for it is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. But she answered him, Sir, even the dogs under the table eat the children's crumb. Then he said to her, For saying that, you may go. The demon has left your daughter. So she went home, found the child lying on the bed, and the demon gone. Then he returned from the region of Tyre and went by way of Sidon toward the Sea of Galilee in the region of the Decapolis. They brought to him a deaf man who had an impediment in his speech, and they begged him to lay his hand on him. He took him aside in private, away from the crowd, and put his fingers into his ears, and he spat and touched his tongue. And then looking up to heaven, he sighed and said to him, Ephathatha, that is, be opened. And immediately his ears were opened, his tongue was released, and he spoke plainly. Then Jesus ordered them to tell no one, but the more he ordered them, the more zealously they proclaimed it. They were astounded beyond measure, saying, He has done everything well. He even makes the deaf to hear and the mute to speak. So that first story that we hear, there are numerous ways of interpreting that particular story because of uh, what's happening in that ancient culture and what we do and don't understand about the ancient world and what it might mean and what we do and don't know about uh, this woman in particular in this story. But my guess is for you, like for me, like many of us, we hear this story and we think that doesn't sound like Jesus when he says, you know, she's begging him to cast the demon out of her daughter. And he says, let the children be fed first, for it is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. What? He's not going to heal her? What, what is he talking about? And I, again, there's a number of different ways to hear that and to read that. One of the things we note, of course, is that Jesus is not, he, he's in Gentile country, in a Gentile region, and we hear that very clearly. And so he's with, he's with outsiders. He himself is an outsider. Uh, people who are not Jewish 
we certainly have always stood, understood. Scripture makes it very clear that uh, Jewish people uh, come first. They are the chosen people in many ways simply because that's God's grace. Uh, we're not left behind, but we've understood that they were chosen first in, in some ways. And so is he simply talking about that? That uh, just get in line and, and wait your turn. That might be one way of interpreting it. The other is to look more carefully at what he means by dogs. There were, and I said this actually yesterday um, during our pet blessing, that uh, there really was no such thing as pets um, as we know pets in the ancient world. And so when you hear a dog, you can't think about a dog like, uh, like you might have in your home or uh, the wonderful pets that joined us in church yesterday. But sometimes we interpret this as kind of a simple household uh, metaphor that a dog is simply a dog and talking about it that way. Um, more often we think about it as a much more derogatory term Sometimes it might be seen that talking about dogs in other places in scripture, we might be uh, referencing a dog as in an enemy. Uh, the Apostle Paul actually talks about it that way, that uh, uses dogs as a way to talk about his enemies. Um, sometimes dogs were as other kinds of sinful people or idolaters or those kinds of things, people who might be on the outside of a city uh, seen as an outsider in that sense. It might be interpreted that way. Sometimes this term is used to identify someone as being sexually um, promiscuous, and so he might be referring to the woman that way. So as you can see, it can be a whole range of things. Another one um, is that she might actually be wealthy, and he is uh, pointing out uh, class differences as well that... Uh, she might be expecting more than she should simply because of her wealth. And there's a few things in there that would lead interpreters to think about those kinds of things. And so as you can see, there are all sorts of different ways you can interpret uh, what Jesus is saying to her in terms of wait your turn or not you at this point or, or whatever that might be. And at first it appears that Jesus is saying no. But of course, what we hear is that she says, yes, uh, sir, even the dogs, though, get under the table and are able to eat the crumbs. And then Jesus responds, as you have said this, you may go, you have been healed. And so what we ultimately hear, whatever the reasoning is, what we ultimately hear is that no one is outside the opportunity to receive the healing from Jesus, uh, no matter who she is might have been no matter what her um, her class, her gender, her race. In the end, none of that mattered. She or her daughter, more specifically, was able to receive the healing from Jesus. Uh, Brian Stoppergen is uh, one of the commentators I look to regularly. He says it like this. Jesus' help for this Gentile woman extends just beyond ethnic differences, but also goes to someone who is without the law of Moses someone who may have moral failings or wealthy, someone who would have been considered an enemy at the time of Mark's readers, whatever lines might have been drawn in the sand, Jesus seems willing to step to the other side. And we hear it as well in the story of the healing of the man who is deaf and perhaps mute certainly has an impediment in his speech. Again, uh, the person was different, would have been considered outside normality uh, due to his disability, yet Jesus takes him and uh, heals him as well. So one of the things to think about and uh, one of the ways to, to look at this gospel, I, I want to end simply letting you know where my mind is going as I'm looking ahead to Sunday, particularly knowing that we're going to be doing this service of healing. And I, I was struck um, by the fact that Jesus seems a little bit reticent in both situations to perform the healing. First, the conversation with the woman and then with the man, um, taking him away and uh, doing these physical things. But most importantly, what caught my ear was that Jesus looked up to heaven and sighed before he healed the man. And so 
just wondering what's happening there and what that perhaps reluctance um, on the part of Jesus might mean for healing in general. And how do we look at healing? And what does healing mean? And is healing, is it not different than being cured? And so that's that's probably where I'm going to go and you'll be hearing more on Sunday. Uh, but why would Jesus be reluctant to heal? What's his purpose in healing? And uh, what does that mean, as always, what does that mean for us? So those are some of the things I'll leave you with today as um, I continue to look at the scripture reading throughout the week. Hope that you'll be able to join us again, church, just 10 a.m. Uh, Messiah Worships United on Sunday, but a, a service of healing and blessing. So hope that you'll be able to join us, if not in person, then online. In the meantime, have a great week.